What is going on guys? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to show you how to make music like Mick Gordon did when he created the tracks for Doom and Doom Eternal. <laughs> Now, disclaimer, this is my take on that style of music. Mick Gordon has a lot more gear than I do, and he has a lot more talent than I do, but I use the gear that I had and the tech that I had, which is pretty much all software. I don't play the guitar, and I use those to create a track like you would hear in the Doom soundtracks. And now keep in mind that there are several styles of tracks that were used in the Doom soundtrack. You have uh, ambience, which is a lot of drones, soundscapes, pads, things like that. Then you have uh, a lot lot of heavy electronic sounds, just heavily post-processed glitches and basses and things. And then you have the more metal side of the soundtrack, which is what made the soundtrack, in my opinion, what made it so iconic. And some of the highlighted tracks of this style are tracks such as BFG Division, Rip and Tear, and the new track, The Only Thing They Fear Is You, which is from Doom Eternal. And that track is the one that has the most inspiration for the one that I have created today. So let's start all the way back at the beginning. So step one will be to set your tempo. And personally, I mean, you can set your tempo to whatever you want here. I've heard tracks of all kinds of tempos, you know, throughout the Doom soundtrack. I personally chose 180 because I think it has a good fast tempo and it's good for halftime rhythms. But step two will be, of course, to pull out a guitar plugin. If you cannot play guitar yourself, such as me, then you can use a plugin. It won't sound quite as good in my opinion, but it will do the trick. I personally like the Odin 2 from Solemn Tones, but you can also use Shreddage, which is available for contact. I've heard plenty of good things about that one, but I like the Odin 2 from Solemn Tones because it opens without contact and it has some pretty good uh, key switches. And what I mean by that is when you're writing your riffs, you can control what kind of playing is being done with these notes down here. For example, C2 right here, it doesn't make any sound because that means that the string is being just an open pluck. It's just a normal picking setting. And then the E up here means that it is muted, so you'll get chugs. And the Odin 2 provides a list of what uh, notes correspond with what playing styles. But point being, I wanna just create a nice riff here that's dark, it's heavy, and it's catchy. It kinda makes your head go back and forth. <laughs> and I personally thought that riff sounded pretty nice. And step two will be to double it by taking one instance of the Odin 2 and setting it to one guitar, and then a different instance of the Odin 2 and setting it to a different guitar. And what you can do is use the layer plugin to play both of those plugins at the same time through one channel. So I took that riff that I just wrote and I put it into layer. Now that we have two guitars playing, you can pan one hard right and one hard left to get a super wide, heavy sound. That's called double tracking. Two will be to get some metal drums. This is the kit that I have open. And I kind of wrote a drum pattern to go along with the guitars. And these are all sounds that I imported into FPC off just some free metal samples I found on the internet. I forget where they were, but you can buy drum plugins as well that are specifically designed to play a drum kit. For example, I also have die switch drums right here, which does the exact same thing. And also I just grabbed a closed hi-hat and threw that over top. to keep the energy up. But those are not the only drums that we add. We also add some synth drums to make it even heavier and punchier. This is gonna be a nice heavy kick and then a snare as well. The snare is gonna be a little lower volume because the metal snare, I, I really wanted to ring out more, but I also layered it with this. This is just the beginning of a snare. It's just a little zap. And I use that in the beginning to add a little more transient to my snare, make it a little clickier. So heavy drums. Next up, after that, to layer with the guitar, we're going to need a bass to play a bass line. This is actually a free bass plugin right here, so it's pretty good. It's not great, and the processing I have on the bass is not great either, but uh, I'm just working with what I have, and this is what it turned out like. Thank you. 
I could have written a more creative bass pattern that plays something a little different from the guitar, but I decided to just match the guitar and the bass. And while we're speaking about the guitar and bass, I can just show you basically how I process them. I have the bass clean going into two sections. I have the first section uh, being just the normal bass where I have it being EQ'd kind of strangely like this, and then I have it running through a Maximus, which is just doing compression. And then I have it running through another channel, which is bass distortion, where it is actually running through a couple of plugins. I have an EQ, I have Legion, which is just a free uh, guitar distortion simulator. And then I have this uh, free cabinet plugin where I've loaded in some impulses. Again, this doesn't sound perfect, you know what I'm saying? If I had paid for some better guitar amps and I pr probably could have gotten a better sound for this bass. Um, and for the guitar because I used those two same plugins on the guitar, but I'm just working with what I have here and then an EQ at the end. And then for the guitar, I'm running the TSC 808, also free. I'm running Legion, like I said before, and then I'm running Emissary, which is just an amp sim. I just use a little bit of that on top of it. It's pretty nice. And then the cabinet simulator, which has a few impulses that I downloaded from the internet, and then just a final uh, EQ. <laughs> And then the left and the right channel are running through one track with all the rhythm guitars, where I have just a little bit of sound goodizer here. I have some EQing just to top it all off, a little bit of OTT because I wanted to bring it out and make it stronger, and then just another EQ. So that's basically the processing for the bass and the guitars. And now it's time to add some layers. So the first thing I did was I grabbed a Brom, Bram, however it's pronounced, from Ghost Hack and I keyed it into place, and then I actually play the same melody that the guitar plays. It's very quiet right now, but that just sits in the background and adds a little more grit and aggression to the guitar riff. And to add some high frequency, I went ahead and made some noise in 3X Oscillator, and then I have it playing basically the same notes. And you may think, okay, why would you make it play notes if it's just noise? Well, this is a little bit of a special noise. It's hard to tell, but I actually have it layered a little bit with a sine wave. And in the effects section, you can see there's the sine wave down there, and then there's the noise. I have it running through a lot of distortion, which the, the low sine wave is actually going to shape the noise to make it a little crunchier based on what uh, pitch is being played by that sub. And then I go into Serum Effects, and that's where I have a phaser creating a nice tone, and then EQ that's cutting out all of uh, the super duper high end, and the sub bass. So now we're left with just the noise that was being distorted by the sub, and you add a little bit of reverb, and it mixes in very nicely. Next up, a synth bass to layer with this guitar. And honestly, this preset is what pops up when you open Harmer. When you first open Harmer, this is the preset that pops up. I did some slight edits. I kind of messed around with the distortion. I messed around with the unison a little bit and just got it into a good state. And I also cut the sub. So this is just layering on top of the guitar to add a more heavy sort of brutal synth element. I liked the way that preset kind of moved and morphed around. Next up, I have some synth layers. First is this one. Which these layers just sit on top. And this one in particular is actually pretty quiet. It's kind of in the background. It's just adding that screechy ambience. This is a Harmer patch where I've just made a crazy detuned saw way with the phase all the way up. I added some distortion and then some reverb and chorus and compression and stuff. So nothing too complicated here. I just made a super screechy synth. And then I layered some choir Oz on the root note. It's a nice deep and low choir, it works really good for these kind of tracks. And then after that, I have some super high violins. Way up here, yeah. Now the track is in E, so I have it playing in E, and then I have a B on top of it to hit that fifth. And that layers right on top, and layering something super high like that really opens the track up in my experience. Next up, we have some bigger screechy synths that are less in the background and more up front. This is used a lot in the tracks that I had mentioned in the beginning of this video, and it sounds like this. And this is a mixture of the choir Oz, right here. 
running through some distortion and reverb, and this super screechy serum patch, which is essentially just very, very detuned saw waves with a lot of voices. After that, we have some effects like a choir hit. We have a noisy cymbal. We have a crash. And then we have some backwards hits just leading up right into the, uh, just the main drop area like that, and it all hits to just make that moment more impactful. And that hits several times throughout the track, but we're not just going to talk about that loop. I actually made some changes later on in the track as well, which you will hear in a minute. And what I did here is I made a guitar variation that plays something that is a little bit similar to the original riff, but it's a little bit different. It's not quite as understandable and easy to follow. It's a little, it's a little tighter, more aggressive, a little faster. It sounds like this. And I personally think that sounds sick. I also put in a bass line to go with it. And then a new drum pattern to go along with these sounds. You can tell I went a little more chaotic in this bit just because I wanted to. And that is a common theme with the tracks that I heard in Doom. It will have a main section and then it'll go down into a more brutal section where things just get a little crazier. And in that part, I actually didn't layer any of the other layers such as the Bram slash Brahm, the noise, uh, the Harmer bass, or the uh, little screechy leads. It's basically all just drums, guitar, and bass. And these are what I did for the synth drums. I just changed the pattern to match uh, the guitar riffs. And then it transitions into a final heavier part where I bring in the Harmer bass, I bring in that small screech in the background, I bring in the choir Oz, the violins, and I also bring in the main screech sound that's playing the original screech pattern, the one that sounds like this. And we can just get really super heavy and energetic in that last part before we crash out of the track. Also, you can throw a little side chain up top if you want, just side chaining some of the background elements to the synth drums can add a little more aggression. It can allow you them to punch through the mix a little more. So now it's just a matter of arrangement, throwing these elements together in ways that are interesting and entertaining and heavy and evil and awesome. So now that I have everything, here's the final minute of Doom music that we've created. So there is just a little insight on how I would go about making Doom style metal music in FL Studio with just some software plugins. Yeah, maybe I crushed it a little too hard through the master and maybe the mix wasn't sublime like Mick Gordon, but I have all the elements there. And as far as everything tracked out, it works pretty dang well. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I could kill demons to this. Also, if you are interested, there is a live stream we did where I was creating sort of cinematic game, dark style music that ended up turning into something Doom-like. If you're interested in that, you can click the link in the description that will take you to that video. So thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and all that good stuff. And I will see you in in the next video, rip and tear until it is done.